I'm Lisa Summerscales, and this is Video Game Purgatory. If you use your decoder ring to find the path to the silver key, and then spun in a circle and did a little dance just to get to this point, then you already know what today's episode is all about. Insane and arbitrary puzzles! Video game puzzles walk a fine line between making you feel clever and making you feel like your only hope is to have the same exact mental illness as their creator, so the right shrieking voices in your head can explain their otherwise inexplicable logic to you. These puzzles are the second kind. Silent Hill games are famous for being tense, psychologically jarring thrillers set in a nightmare world that reflects the fears of the person inside it. And apparently, Silent Hill heroes share a crippling fear of high school English class. At one point, you visit a hospital full of monstrous nurses and a room of corpses numbered 0 through 9, like a Price is Right puzzle designed by Bob Barker after a deep existential crisis. You need four of those numbers to open a lock. But which four? Well, there's a poem on the lock, and each corpse holds a poem about a bird. Because everyone knows evil monsters love amateur ornithology! <laughs> So, for example, the fourth verse in the main poem references the sweet blood on his laughing lips and the gates of hell. That's obviously a reference to the first bird poem, so the fourth number is one. Get it? Because the sparrow's a killer? Come on, it's all clear allusion to the 18th century British nursery rhyme. And let's be real, who plays a video game before studying up on Enlightenment era folklore? In The Samaritan Paradox, you're hired to investigate the suspicious suicide of a mystery writer. He supposedly drowned himself, so you start with the new owner of his boat, only for him to refuse to talk to you until you help him finish his crossword puzzle. So far, this makes perfect sense, by game logic. And by real logic, too. That's how things work in real life. You need me to what? Help me with my crossword puzzle. Uh, it's two down, British economist, possibly saved capitalism. It's six letters. This is a murder investigation. Someone died on your boat. Mm-hmm. It starts with a K. Does that do anything for you? Murder investigation. It's Keynes. Keynes. Keynesian. Economics is the whole... K. E. Oh. Y. Mm -hmm. And mm. unfortunately, there's one clue that stumps you. What's the name of the dead writer's detective hero? His daughter can't tell you because while she loved her father enough to pay a man to investigate his death, she apparently treated his life's work like it was a child's drawing that you half glance at. So obviously the solution is to go to a totally unrelated bar. Hey, it's what everyone else does who sucks at their job. Did you catch that blob of pixel sitting above the pool table? You're supposed to discern that he's reading a book and it just so happens that it's the one that you need. So you just talk to him or maybe buy him a beer, right? Ugh. You're adorable. He refuses to have anything to do with you. And the only way to fix that is to rummage through the old cushions of the couch for spare change. Give that change to the guy by the jukebox, wait for him to turn on a really loud song that makes the reader storm out, and then steal his book he leaves behind. So you can solve a crossword puzzle in a game that came out in 2014. It's almost too easy. Not as easy as using Wikipedia, obviously, but. It's up there. King's Quest came out in the ancient, misshrouded days of 1983, when every game was either do the same basic task endlessly until you get carpal tunnel, or solve a series of borderline impossible puzzles that disguise the fact that our game is only 20 minutes long. These games are now known as classics. At one point, a gnome asks you to guess his name. Because this is a game with lots of references to fairy tales, he's obviously supposed to be Rumpelstiltskin. So you guess that, and you get told that you're not even close. And you can just feel the condescension oozing off of him. Here he is in the remake where he looks like a smug little Keebler elf. But after you give it a pause and give it a good thing, you remember that note you stumbled across earlier that read, sometimes it is wise to think backwards. So you spell Rumpelstiltskin backwards, right? <laughs> I'm onto your games, little Ninkle Stiltspermer. Wait, that's not it either? God damn it, you little... Okay. So it's 1983, there's no internet, no walkthroughs, and your friends think you're a weirdo for wasting time on this gimmick technology that won't catch on. And with nowhere to turn for help, you either give up and see if you can make a game out of the spreadsheet program, or you can waste hours of your life trying everything you can think of until you eventually stumble across it. You're supposed to flip the entire alphabet backwards, so A is now Z, B is now Y, and Rumpelstiltskin is now if Ifnica... if Nikarvaga, if Nikavagrog. It's now a stupid name! Oh, and the developers also happen to use the less traditional spelling of Rumpelstiltskin, which is my polite way of saying that they spelled his name wrong because they're dumb and I hate them and that's why their stupid series is dead. Stupid gnome thinks he's so smart but he won't even spin me any gold? That's what he does! He spins gold! The Longest Journey is a sprawling tale of good versus evil told between interconnected fantasy and sci-fi worlds. Absolutely none of which is known to you near the start of the game, when your art student heroine decides she needs to retrieve a random key from some electrified subway tracks. It's called being financially responsible. She can melt that key down, sell it for scrap, and then, you know, use the profits to buy a used paintbrush or whatever. That's a real bargain for art students. Reduce, reuse, 
you know, whatever. The game won't let you shut down power to the entire metropolitan area just so you can satisfy your magpie-like hoarding tendencies. So obviously, the next step is to trudge back to your apartment in a totally different part of the city and start screwing with a machine that controls water pressure. Your goal is to steal that clamp because apparently it's the only clamp left in your sprawling industrial city set in a grim future where Home Depot has gone out of business. And rather than just talk to your building super, who's literally a character that you're on friendly terms with, you just have to do it yourself. I guess pretending to be an expert in something you have no experience in does make her a realistic college student. <laughs> nice one, Lise. Next, you... Okay, neither of us want to be here all day losing our tenuous grasp on the concept of logic, so let's just power through this. So you go back up to your apartment, look out the window, see an inflatable duck trapped in sewage water below. You drop breadcrumbs onto it, watch seagulls come and peck a hole into it, grab the clothesline hanging outside because f your neighbors who were using it, find where the duck floated off to, patch the hole with a band-aid, reinflate it, tie the clothesline to the clamp, and put the clamp through the duck and force it open. Rip off the band-aid and then hold the contraption over the key like you're fishing and wait for the deflating duck to let the clamp snap closed. Well, that was absurd. But as improbable and infuriating as that sequence of events was, it was all worth it when you discover that the key gives you access to a movie theater fuse box. You break it so you can sneak in, so you can meet a man that you met already earlier right outside of your apartment, so he can immediately lead you out into an easily accessible back alley. Man video games. Hopkins FBI is an adventure game where your FBI agent hero, I forgot his name, is hot on the trail of evil criminal mastermind Bernie Berkson. Seriously? It's Bernie Berkson? All right! Anyway, while you're on the case, you get shot and go to heaven. But you're not gonna let a little thing like eternal paradise keep you from your job. So you steal a woman's clothes, convince a heavenly guard to meet you at a bar for drinks, and then sneak into the room that he was guarding to teleport back to Earth. But wait! That's not the stupidest part. Your hero has absolutely no reaction to learning the answer to life's greatest mystery, and instead just gets right back to work, like he's finished up a lunch break. That dastardly Bernie is now murdering women and hiding their bodies all around town, and you need to stop him from prematurely sending them to paradise, I guess? What you just saw was pretty self-explanatory, but just to be clear, you threw a Molotov cocktail into a public museum to melt a wax statue of King Louis XIV that a naked woman had been fatally baked into. Classic Bernie Berkson. That still wasn't the stupidest part, you guys. Later, you find yourself in Bernie's underwater lair, and you need your girlfriend's help to stop him from using his cloning device to rob heaven. Just roll with that, guys. We've got dumber fish to fry. You see, earlier in the game, you fell for the world's most obvious trap and accidentally shot your girlfriend dead. So you clone yourself, murder the confused man you just created and have him retrieve your girlfriend from heaven. Duh. Then together, you save the day. The credits roll and you skip right past the part where you and your girlfriend you killed inform the world that heaven is real, but was almost knocked off by a murderous scientific genius and waxworking enthusiast. Tragically, the sequel of Hopkins Pope was never completed. I wish I could share more video game puzzles with you, but the string of words I just said are so insane that I'm worried my mouth will trick my brain into thinking that we're actually having a stroke if I say any more. So let's just say that that's it for now, and join me next month for something different, yet equally horrible. Hey, I'm Lisa Summerscales, and this has been Video Game Purgatory. Join us every month, and if you guys want to tell us what you want to see more of, go ahead and comment right below. You can follow me at Instagram at lsummerscales or on Twitter at I am Summerscales.